This week, gas prices in the U.S. hit all-time records. And us Subaru drivers with our all-wheel drive systems know that our cars aren't the most fuel efficient to start off with. High 20s, low to mid 30 MPGs are about what Subaru vehicles normally average. Being here in the summer months with all-wheel drive that's not really needed is really a hindrance and causes more pain at the pump. Today we're going to talk about some tips and tricks that you can utilize to maximize MPGs in your Subaru and help alleviate some of that stress when it's time to fill up. So first and foremost, the biggest hindrance to your MPGs in your Subaru is that right there, your right foot and that gas pedal you need to control the way you take off from a stop sign or a stoplight. You need to be wary of your speed and not speed. The more you speed, the higher your engine RPMs are. The higher your engine RPMs are, the more fuel you will consume. Try to stay near or below the speed limit if you wanna maximize your fuel economy. I know that that is a pain for some of you, especially with the way that most people are driving nowadays. You get on the interstate and it is crazy. You drive the speed limit, you're gonna get run over. But if you're trying to maximize your MPGs and not get the squeeze at the pump, you need to slow it down. Don't come flying up to red lights or stop signs. Coast when you can anything to maximize the fuel economy. If you have a newer Subaru that has the little MPG gauge, start paying attention to it. Now the MPG gauge basically just shows you your throttle position. The further down you're pushing on the gas pedal, the more you're gonna go to the left or the negative side of the gauge. The lighter you are on the gas pedal, the more you'll be to the right side or the positive side of the MPG gauge. If you watch that gauge and monitor that gauge, it will put in your mind after a while, helping you change your driving habits. You won't be as hard on the gas pedal. You won't accelerate as quickly if you're trying to maximize that fuel economy and getting the best miles per gallon out of our vehicle. One, you wanna make sure that you are up to date on all of your service and maintenance. Make sure that your front and rear differential gear oil is clean and has been replaced. Make sure that your air filter is clean and not dirty. Make sure that your spark plugs are in good condition. If you haven't changed them in the last 80 to 100,000 miles, it's time to get in there and do it. Make sure that there's no oil leaking from the rocker covers into your coil packs. All the normal kind of stuff, clean your throttle body, all the kind of general maintenance items we've covered before in the past on this channel. Make sure all of your stuff is up and going as optimally as possible. The better your engine runs, the more fuel economy it's going to get. So another important thing when it comes to maximizing your miles per gallon, and that is your tires and your tire pressures. You wanna make sure that you are at the optimum tire pressure as not to have excess friction with the road and consume more fuel than is needed. Also, it helps your handling and overall performance driving on the road. Now, if you wanna know where the optimal tire pressures are for your vehicle, all you have to do is go into your door jam here and this sticker will tell you where you need to set your tire pressures for the best performance. Another big hindrance for your MPGs is excess weight. If you have a bunch of stuff in the trunk of your car, in the back seat of your car, get it out and put it elsewhere. The more weight you carry around with you in your vehicle, the less miles per gallon you're gonna get, the more fuel you're gonna consume. So cut out any excess weight that is not critical to the vehicle or what you do for a living or where you're traveling. You don't want lugging around all this extra weight that's just gonna slow you down and burn more fuel. So this isn't really something that a lot of you can help, but your ride height and the size of your wheels and tires has a lot to do with your MPGs. Now, my Crosstrek, of course, is gonna get worse fuel economy than this Impreza hatch of the same year model because it sits much higher, has larger tires. The more unsprung weight you have in your wheels and tires and the higher your ride height is, means more air is getting trapped under the vehicle, causing more drag and using up more fuel. This Impreza 
being lower to the ground, having lower profile tires, is going to get better miles to the gallon than the Crosstrek. So, if you have a stock Crosstrek, there's not really much you can do to improve your MPGs. This is mainly geared at you Crosstrek Forester Outback owners that have lift kits or oversized mud tires. It might be time to think about putting your factory wheels and tires back on if you still have them and taking out those strut spacers to lower your ride height back down and lower the drag on your vehicle. Talking about drag, most of us that have Subarus are into outdoor activities. We like to mountain bike, we like to kayak, we like to do things out in nature. So most of us have crossbars on our racks. If you're not going kayaking, if you're not going out and hitting the trails on your mountain bike, take off your crossbars, take off your mounts. That's just more stuff that's catching air, causing more drag and burning more fuel. Get it off the roof, maximize your fuel economy. Don't overlook the small things. Yes, it's a pain to take them off and put them back on, but if you're trying to maximize MPGs, get them off and keep them off when not in use. So guys, there's not a lot you can do to dramatically increase your miles per gallon on your Subaru. These are just some small changes that you can make to save yourself a mile per gallon or so. It's not gonna be a ton of savings, but at four plus dollars per gallon, every little bit helps if you're trying to maximize what you're doing. Now, on to your air conditioning system and idling. Avoid excessive idle time. Sitting around with your air conditioning running is just wasting fuel. I know it's hot, summer's approaching. Right now here in South Carolina filming this video is about 94 degrees. No shame in rolling down the windows and cutting the engine off. Save that fuel. If you have an older vehicle, say like an L.L. Bean Outback comes to mind with the H6 engine. On the automatic climate control system, if you push the AC button, there is an economy mode. And what it does is it limits the amount of on time for the AC compressor clutch to cycle. Now, you don't have the absolute coldest of air conditioning, but it lowers the strain of the engine, turning that AC compressor and saving fuel. One other big key thing is to limit little trips. If you're gonna go out, try to plan your entire day, map it out, find the most direct route to hit all the locations you need to go. Making lots of small, short trips waste gas. Plan out your day, plan out your drive before you get in the car, before you start it up, and before you head out of the driveway, and you will maximize your gas and lower the miles you're driving. So one major thing that's hurting all of our MPGs is the quality of our gasoline. It has gone downhill. A little bit of a backstory here. So when I first bought the Crosstrek, it had 020 oil in it, and I'm out in the country, I do a lot of highway driving, more highway than city. And I manually calculate my miles per gallon every fill up. So when I first got the vehicle, I was averaging between 31 and 31 and a half MPGs, which is great for an all drive little boxer engine vehicle. Now I went and switched from 020 to 530 synthetic engine oil. And my MPGs of course dropped because the thicker viscosity oil increased friction in the engine and increased fuel consumption. So I went down to about 29 and a half MPG. I, bought, I lost about one to MPGs from switching my engine oil. So those of you that have oil consumption issues and have switched from the 020 to the 530, you may want to switch back to the 020 and just keep extra oil on hand and get in the habit of regularly checking your oil level. If you want to pick up a mile per gallon or two, that's just something that you might have to bite the bullet and do. You might want to work out the difference on the price of the oil you're consuming and the price of fuel you're using and consuming, but if you want to pick up and maximize that MPGs, go back to the 020 engine oil. So again, back to the quality of our gasoline. Now, most of you know that our gasoline at any pump right now is rated E10, which means it could be up to 10% ethanol content. The problem with that is it's mainly a lie. Most all independent studies of gasoline has shown that they are above 10% concentration of ethanol right now. 
They keep watering down our quality of gasoline with more ethanol and increasing the price at the same time. Gotta love that. So the more ethanol content you have in the gasoline, the worse your MPGs are and the worse overall it is for the condition and health of your engine. So over the last few months, I've noticed that my MPGs have slowly decreased and it's gotta be due to the quality of gasoline. Everything else is as good as can be. Everything mechanically is sound. No check engine lights, no anything wrong. All the maintenance is up to date. So I've been tracking, like I said, I started off at 31 to 31 and a half MPG. I changed my engine oil viscosity and dropped about 29 and a half MPG. Over the last few months, I've noticed that my fuel economy has dropped all the way down to recently 25 to 26 MPG, which is a dramatic drop with no other changes in driving habits or fuel usage. So I did a little bit of an experiment and I filled up with non-ethanol gasoline. I paid that premium cost for no ethanol. And I found out after running about three tanks through and manually calculating my MPGs that my fuel economy improved. The last gas fill up on non-ethanol gasoline got me back up to 28.9 MPG, a big improvement over regular ethanol gasoline. Now the problem here is that recently the EPA has changed and is now allowing up to 15% ethanol in the gasoline, which we already were probably about near that as we were with it being capped at 10%. So that aside, they keep watering down and diluting our gasoline and charging us more and more for it. It's just one of those painful things. So depending on what non-ethanol gas goes for compared to normal gas, you might wanna calculate the MBGs and the price per gallon if it is worth it to go ahead and spend a little bit more for non-ethanol gas or if you want to keep using the regular gasoline. So guys, there you have it. Some tips and tricks to help you squeeze out as much as you can at the gas pump in your Subaru vehicle. Again, you're not going to see a giant increase in your miles per gallon with these steps, but all these small steps add up over time. Again, with gas being over $4.20 on average across the country, every little bit helps. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you all in the next one.